another episode of Spikes and Hills Football for Beginners Tutorials. I'm Gwen. And I'm Sabrina. So grateful to have you with us on this day. Yes, and we're excited to get right into our latest lesson. So now, ladies and gentlemen, here's our first Q&A in Spikes and Hills. <laughs> So we're going to start with a question that we received, not on our comments, but like someone that we know directly. And she happens to be my mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she asked the question. She watched the last video. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch it. And her question was, how can a team with a better record be ranked lower than another team in the playoffs? So go ahead and explain that. Okay, here we go. Four divisions. Remember, the first, the best record within that division goes one, two, three, four. And then how they do, they put those teams in order. So let's use this year's playoff as an example. Perfect example. We're about mm -hmm. to show you. So um, the top finishers in the NFC conference were Green Bay, New Orleans, Seattle, and Washington. Mm -hmm. Washington, we had a record of seven and nine, right? Seven wins, nine, and nine losses. Yeah. But the Buccaneers that were in another division had a record of 10 and six. Mm -hmm. We were ranked higher than them. With the and my mother's question was how? How is that possible? Right. It is. Because you can only, you take the top teams out of each division. Our division was horrible this year. We had the best record out of our division. So the Washington football team was seated in the fourth position because we were the top of our division. Remember, the top team from each division gets to go to the playoffs. Right. Then they look at all the remaining teams, no matter what division they're in within that conference, and they pull the top records from the remaining teams. 12 teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. They, they pull three, the highest three of the remaining 12 teams. It doesn't matter what division they're in. Mm -hmm. Then they go by record five, six, and seven. So this right. is how a seven and nine Washington team was ranked higher than a 10 and six Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. Because, again, Washington won their grouping, their division yes, of four. They yeah. had the best record of seven and nine out of – that means everybody was terrible, like Gwen said. So <laughs> we were fourth. And then Tampa Bay, since they didn't win their division – Because New Orleans had a better record than Tampa Bay in their division. So New mm -hmm. Orleans got the automatic spot in the playoff. Mm -hmm. But remember, after the top four teams are selected – they go in and pull the top three from the remaining 12, mm -hmm. no matter what division they're in. Because we had one on the AFC side. Three teams from one division mm -hmm. made the playoffs on the AFC side. And that's, that, that normally never happens. Mm -hmm. But this division was so great this year, yeah. so good, that all of their teams made it except for one. And that division was the AFC North. Yeah. You had the Steelers go, the Browns went, and the Ravens. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's possible for more than one team from each division, of course. As well as it's also possible for a team with a, with a worse record than yours have a higher seating. That's right. So there you have it. I hope we explained it. If we didn't, let us know. Yeah, put it in the comments. Or if you know us personally, send us a text saying, I don't get it. I still don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but we enjoyed that. Yes. So this question came in from a good friend of mine. She was watching the game with her husband, and she said, oh, no, the Redskins are negative 20, and the Cowboys is positive 6. Right, right. I was flabbergasted. Right, negative Sorry. 20. <laughs> because she looked and she saw a little dink or dash in front of the score on our, on the um, Redskins. Uh-huh. So it's th this is very simple. Uh -huh. When you see the little dash or dot in front of the number, mm -hmm. that is the TV people uh, letting you know who has possession of the ball or who is on offense. Yeah. That's all. That's all. There's no negative. That's just a little ding. If you look carefully, it's not even a dash. It's more shaped like a football. Mm -hmm. If you look really, it's kind of like a, elliptical shape like a football you know that oval shape yeah. that's only alerting you to this this is the team that's on offense 
or has possession of the ball. Great, and that reminds me also, uh, some people may wonder what the three dashes underneath each team's name is. And he's like, why are there three dashes or boxes or lights or whatever? And those are used to indicate the timeouts. So each team, we say, gets timeouts. And on the screen, sometimes they'll show you how many timeouts each team has left, you know, for that half or whatever. So it may be three, two, one, or none. None. You may have used them all. Yeah. So look closer. You think it's one long line, but it's not. They're broken up. So it's just three little dashes to indicate the timeouts. Time out. Okay, my next question is also from my mother. She asked this question, and today is your day, Ma. Here's another one. She said, um, sometimes you'll hear the referee say false start, which means that somebody was moving before they were supposed to, before the ball was snapped. But she said, well, if that's such a thing, then why is that player running in behind the quarterback or running or whatever on the offense? How come he can move and it's not a penalty? So how do we explain that to the people, Gwen? Kind of, okay, bear with us, but here it goes. <laughs> so that player is called in motion. So they're allowed to move. Move one person, just one. <laughs> and then you'll also see sometimes the middle linebackers or the corner, whoever's covering that guy, mm -hmm. as long as that front line doesn't move, they are allowed to move to to cover. So if the uh, offensive player, the wide, the wide receiver or the tight end can run across and be in motion, one defensive player not on the line can run across and be in motion. Right. So basically, picture the person on offense running, getting ready to start the play. They have to have somebody on the other side shadowing them. You know what Correct. I mean? It's like they're, whatever they move, this you person move. moves. When I move, you move. Okay, never mind. Anyway. If you don't come across with a ball, is he feel your side? You can run in motion behind the line on your side. Right. So that's why you may see one person moving that's allowed to move if anybody else moves it's false penalty. start yeah penalty it's called encroachment if the defense is moves and come and it's called false start if it's the offense great question <laughs> hey so our last q a of the day is i was asked what determines why do how does a team determine whether they're going to punt the ball or kick a field goal Okay, so it's all about positioning on the field. You know when you see the big, long football field and in the middle is the 50-yard line? On one side of the 50-yard line, it's like you're only in your territory. But if you cross the other side, you're in the other team's territory. So football is just like a game of territory. What determines whether you kick a field goal or not is if whether you're on your side of the field or the other team's side of the field. And if you're on the other team's side of the field, are you close enough for your kicker to make it? Because every kicker has different foot strings, as we talked about before. So if you have a pretty good kicker, and but you're kind of far back, you might be able to make it. So it just depends on how close you are and where you are on the field, whether you kick the ball back to the other team on third down or fourth down or go for a field goal for three points. Okay, guys, Gwen reminded me, she said, Sabrina, we missed a position when we broke down the offensive and the defensive and the special teams. In the previous episodes, there was a position that we did not go over, and that is the fullback, but it also is known as other names, too. So, Gwen, take it away. So, the fullback is lined, is, is lined up behind the quarterback and behind the running back. So sometimes you will see two people standing behind the quarterback. The person furthest from the quarterback behind him is the fullback. This person also goes by tailback and halfback. We don't know why. It's just too complicated to break it down even further. But right. trust me, this is the best definition I'm about to give you. The fullback mainly is for a blocking assignment. Mm -hmm. He can receive the ball and be handed the ball, but usually when you see the running back and a fullback behind the quarterback, it's either to disguise a play. Mm -hmm. Like a, who's going to get the ball. the ball. So it's now there's two of them who want to get it. Right. Then you can have a trick play. There are plays sometimes when the fullback will throw to another person. We're going to get into that further down in the season. But mainly, it's for he's for blocking. 
he's an extra blocker. Exactly. Yeah. So imagine the, t the tight end is on the line. He take the first hit, boom. Mm -hmm. And the fullback and the running back start off together and start running. Then the fullback will get in front and take the next hit, boom. Yes. So they're supposed to launch the running back further to get more yards. Mm -hmm. But there you have it. Now that's really all of the positions now. All right, everybody, that wraps it up. That was a quick one, but we're so glad that you stayed to the end, hopefully. <laughs> and on next week's um, Football for Beginners, we're going to start telling you the different types of penalties along with the hand motions that go with it. <laughs> so if you see Bogan. <laughs> right, we want to show you some penalties and what they mean and what the – so if you see a referee do this or this, or we ain't gonna, we gotta be watching. You can't be doing your hands some certain type Everybody of way. Somebody, my, my niece said, "Why they do a Wakanda forever?" Oh God! <laughs> it, was so, it was so sweet. They do a Wakanda. <laughs> and we're gonna show you what all these weird arm motions yes. mean, and we're gonna get into that next week. You can't do them all, but we'll do some. You can do some. The most popular. Yeah, there you go. And so that's it. That wraps it up for today for football for beginners. I'm Sabrina, and I'm Gwen. Stay safe, stay blessed, love someone. Bye. Bye.